Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and it's Grammy season, so let's talk about it. While this channel is primarily a electronic dance music kind of channel, I do like to talk about and listen to all types of music, and so I thought I would give my predictions for what I believe are going to win the big four major categories for the Grammys this year. Those four categories being Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Album of the Year, and Best New Artist. So let's get into it. We're just gonna quickly go category by category and talk about each individual nomination and I'll give a quick mini little synopsis of what I think about each track. So let's start with record of the year. And just a quick caveat, something that I just realized actually pretty recently, the difference between a record of the year and song of the year. It's weird, I normally call a record an album, but the Grammys call a record a song, a record, and then a song, a song, but record is like the all encompassing production and yeah, does sound design and mixing and quality of a song where song of the year is more necessarily about the songwriting and the individual performance of the song. So record of the year is all encompassing of a song. Song of the year is more songwriting and performance. So first of all, let's talk about record. Billie Eilish, What Was I Made For? For a lighthearted movie, this track was an emotional gut punch and all encompassing, this is a brilliant take on the inner turmoil of Barbie's mind with great writing and production. Boy Genius, Not Strong Enough. My personal favorite song of the year, Not Strong Enough, perfectly encapsulates Boy Genius's The Record with grand production and raw storytelling. John Batiste, Worship. I didn't really find this record all that interesting, especially considering how full and sporadic the overall album ended up being. Miley Cyrus, Flowers. The most streamed song of 2023, Miley Cyrus's Flowers is the quintessential pop record. Nothing outlandish or super creative, just a good song. Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire. A great lead single from a great album. This track has a solid mix of songwriting for commercial appeal with a strong supportive production. SZA, Kill Bill. Rigid to the point and nasty in all the right ways, Kill Bill is SZA's best solo track, maybe yet. Taylor Swift, Antihero. Arguably the real biggest song of the year, Antihero has its ups and downs, and I don't really think the production stands out enough to warrant a real shot at this one. Victoria Monet, On My Mama. A real solid R&B cut, but a real dark horse to win this category as a breakthrough artist this year. So those are the nominations for Record of the Year, but what do I think will win? I think it should go to Boy Genius, Not Strong Enough, but I think SZA's Kill Bill will take it in the end. Not Strong Enough was my song of the year, and it really should be yours too, honestly. As someone that doesn't listen to a ton of pop, this being a little bit more indie pop is an incredible track. Grand production, great climactic finale, and just incredible narrative storytelling all throughout. But in a similar vein, SZA's Kill Bill is a great track as well, and I think with the popularity that SZA has seen in this past year, I do think SZA will take this one, and I honestly think pretty handedly. Kill Bill is more or less a standard breakup song, but one that is just... Uh, <laughs> deadly <laughs> is really the best way to put it. Okay, let's talk about song of the year now. So this is mainly, again, geared towards songwriting and performance of the track, more so than anything else. Again, Billie Eilish, What Was I Made For? Uh, songwriting alone, this thing will be tough to beat as Billie gets to the real core of Barbie's struggle with self-esteem in a very intimate way. Dua Lipa, Dance the Night, also from the Barbie album. A little shocked that this is nominated for song and not record of the year because the songwriting is meant to be a little bit standard to some extent to allow the production to really shine. So I don't think this one really deserves song of the year nomination. John Batiste, Butterfly. The writing is definitely the best part of this track, but like, why is the song here? This feels like it's only here because he won album of the year last year. Lana Del Rey, a and Probably the least popular of all the songs here. This is definitely the most deserving though, for sure. A more than seven minute narrative exploration of Lana's current emotional state. Miley Cyrus, Flowers. From a songwriting perspective, it's a bit more creative than your stereotypical breakup track, but nothing to really take it above and beyond. Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire. While the lyricism and writing from this track are great, I think it's the production that gives it more favor for me. SZA, Kill Bill. The song has a lot going for it, and the writing is what leads that charge. Yeah, it's again more or less your basic breakup song, but it's got some realness to it that often isn't matched. Taylor Swift, Antihero. I think it's Taylor really getting to the soul of who she is to the world that makes this a standout in the writing category, but is also more or less a regular pop track. 
And with the nominations out of the way, I think Song of the Year should go to Lana Del Rey, A&W, but I do think it will go to Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For. Lana has always been one of those critic-style artists that the Grammys don't often favor more than not. You kind of need a great blend of both popularity and critical success, and Lana's been a little bit more on the critic side as of things lately. I think the song should win by a landslide, but if there was anything that would take it over it, I do think it's got to be Billie Eilish. I mean, just getting to the core of the Barbie mindset in 2023 slash 2024 about <laughs> the identity crisis that Barbie went through in the movie, I uh, this is just great. Would lean it all down into a three and a half minute song. It's just, oh, it's so good. If Lana or Billy doesn't take this, uh, that's bad. Next up is the album of the year. Pretty straightforward. What was the best album of the year? Boy Genius, The Record. My album of the year for sure. This superstar trio really, really took their talents to another level with this record. Janelle Monet, The Age of Pleasure. A serviceable contemporary R&B record with lots of dance elements, but nowhere near Janelle's best album. John Batiste, World Music Radio. I truly believe this is here only because he won last year's album of the year. This album is messy, narratively incoherent at times, and quite the stuffed up record. Lana Del Rey, did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Another Lana album that is incredible, and another Lana album that'll definitely get snubbed when it really comes down to it. Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. A record that I personally enjoyed more than the masses seem to, but really landed on this list because of its popularity. It's a fairly cookie-cutter pop record, and not Miley's best. Olivia Rodrigo, Guts. A more polished and well-rounded record than her debut, Guts is a strong contender to take it all, and one that has both the mass popularity and quality to go along with it. SZA, SOS. SZA proved that she's here to stay with this record, the R&B record of the year. The only question at this point is if it's the overall album of the year as well. Taylor Swift, Midnight's. Ah, uh, Taylor. Another year, another nomination on this list. She may very well win this due to her popularity being at an all-time current high, and it's hard not to give it to Time's Person of the Year, but in a vacuum, this is arguably her weakest record of the last decade. So those are the nominations for Album of the Year. I do think that Boy Genius, the record, should win. Again, my personal favorite. I think it's an incredible record. I just won that I was shocked that I enjoyed at all, but... Oh man, it really needs to take it. But I really do think Olivia Rodrigo with Guts will win it in the end. Another album that I really thoroughly did enjoy. And so I'd be okay with if either one of these takes it, but I do think Olivia Rodrigo will take this one home. She expanded on an already great debut record with Sour, and I think this is just a step up in her game. And finally is the best new artist of the year to round out the big four categories. And just a caveat, I haven't explored all of these artists' discography in full. I pretty much just listened to bits and pieces of their latest albums and whatnot, but I did see a lot of online discourse about these artists, and so uh, this is just a bit of a descriptor of what I feel about them, so take this with a bit of grain of salt. Coco Jones. No shortage of up-and-coming R&B solo acts, but it seems it wasn't until this past year that her stuff really became notable. Gracie Abrams. Is she an industry plant? Maybe, but she's got some talent. A good new artist that could definitely take this award home. Fred again. Ah, Fred again. The dichotomy of incredible live shows and consistently mid-albums. He does have a real shot at this with the great publicity he's been getting lately. Ice Spice. The biggest new artist off this list, Ice Spice has all the popularity with little of the actual talent. Personally, not a fan of Ice Spice, and I think a lot of critics would agree with me. Jelly Roll, uh, the one I know the least about for sure, but he seems like an odd artist for the modern times. Part meme, part country, part hip hop, just kind of a strange persona all around. A long shot for this award, I think. Noah Canna, a great new voice for the indie folk scene with promising potential for a long career. Victoria Monet, a real breakthrough artist with her Jaguar 2 album, and I've seen nothing but praise for her songwriting and style. The War and Treaty. Feels like a bit of a token, diverse genre pick for the category, but hey, they seem like a fairly solid duo. And with those nominations, I do think the best new artist should go to Gracie Abrams, actually. It's the one artist here that I actually know the most of, other than Fred again, but I have a bit of an EDM bias towards, towards Fred again, and I actually don't think he should take the award home. But I do think it will go to Ice Spice, sadly. I just think it's going to go to Ice Spice based off of popularity and name recognition alone. She is 
like massive, bigger than some of the artists that are in the uh, nominated for song record and album of the year. And I, uh, yeah, I just think she's going to take it off of that. And I don't want that. But yeah, those are my predictions for what will win the big four categories this year at the Grammys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think I'm right? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Who do you think is going to win in these four categories? I'd love to hear any and all thoughts in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.